participation in the blogosphere is woefully biased. As a public health researcher, I've been trained to sniff out biases a mile away, especially when there's a potential financial incentive at play. It's challenging to find statistically sound articles about essential oils without seeing banner ads for the very product that is being written about all over the website. Third, there are huge chasms separating different factions of the essential oils industry, and things have a tendency to get ugly. These are the main players in the field. Aromatherapists, bloggers, chemists, governing agencies like the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, healthcare providers, MDs, DOs, etc., network marketers, researchers, suppliers, and manufacturers. Examples of these conflicts abound. Aromatherapists and multi-level marketing distributors are continually at odds with each other, disagreeing about the most fundamental principles of how to use essential oils therapeutically. Chemists are often in disagreement with clinical researchers because they view essential oils through differing lenses, and consumers are always concerned as to whether manufacturers are supplying high-quality pure oils. Moreover, Governing agencies increasingly restrict the use of specific language across the field because essential oils are not approved drugs, and therefore, organizations and individuals that sell them for profit cannot make claims that they can heal the body, cure disease, or even have an effect on the structure-slash-function of the body. Finally, I observed that many doctors and pharmacists are leery of advising their patients about how to use essential oils which makes patients nervous about potential contraindications and drug interactions. It would be untrue to say that medical doctors and pharmacists are not in favor of using alternative therapies, but because aromatherapy is not a topic that they learn about in school, they have no basis for discussing it with their patients unless they have studied the topic on their own. As I mentioned earlier, Essential oils have yet to be approved by the FDA to prevent or treat disease, thus placing medical professionals in a sticky situation. They can neither confirm nor deny the therapeutic use of essential oils because it is out of their scope of practice. Discovering My Calling The more I learned about the friction within the essential oil industry, the more I yearned to bring together thought leaders representing each group to lay aside their differences. With my friend Jill Winger from theprairiehomestead.com at the helm as my co-host, the idea behind the Essential Oils Revolution online summit was born in June of 2014. We decided to host a free online conference, commonly referred to as a tele-summit, so we could provide interviews with these experts to a mass audience. Similar to live streaming YouTube videos, we created a website that acted like a conference meeting space. People from all over the globe could join for free and from the comfort of their home watch a series of interviews from experts representing nearly every sector of the essential oils community. Online health summits have been around for a while, but none about oils had really taken off because they tended to be a sales pitch to sell essential oils. To remedy this, we eliminated what public health researchers call financial or brand bias and ensured that every interview we conducted was non-branded, meaning that even the slightest mention of the interviewee's favorite essential oil brands was not permitted. We set out to do what people told me was impossible because of the overwhelming animosity within the essential oils industry. With the exception of my loving, supportive wife, Nearly everyone I spoke to said that we wouldn't be able to convene aromatherapists, bloggers, chemists, researchers, and healthcare professionals under one roof to talk about essential oils. After nearly a year of rejected offers, criticism, and negativity from countless leaders within each camp, Jill and I proudly launched the Essential Oils Revolution on May 11, 2015. We carefully selected panelists to offer insight on different subjects related to their particular expertise and covered a gamut of topics from safety guidelines to cooking with oils to a myriad of health conditions including cancer, autoimmune conditions, chronic fatigue, and weight loss. More than 165,000 people from more than 20 countries participated in that first summit, which proved to be one of the largest online events of its kind. We received thousands of comments and emails from our online followers, and it became clear that most essential...